Hey everyone and welcome to another video guys and I hope you all had a lovely Christmas and New Year's with your friends and family but we're in 2021 now and I really wanted to kick off the year with a bang and this specific topic has been on my mind for a very long time but I didn't really know how to approach it. Now I finally feel confident enough to tackle it and I really hope this one helps you out guys. Now we all know of players that are half stuck or stuck or plateaued at a specific rank and in my experience with my coaching clients it's generally at these specific breakpoints I see people stuck at like goal 2 or gold one for like a year or sometimes multiple years or like platinum one they're stuck at like platinum one for an entire season or they're stuck at d1 for an entire season and this says to me that this is a massive problem like if i click on the opg and i see platinum 200 lp on the what's this like the may of 2020 and they're still platinum 2 actually dropped on 2020 december for like seven months they've been at the exact same rank something is going wrong here me as a teacher or as a coach I need to understand what is going on here specifically. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down how I believe improvement actually works and why I think people actually get stuck and what we need to do to get out of this really toxic cycle. Now in season 10, if you would have asked me, Curtis, give me a visual representation of what you believe improvement to look like, I would have drawn something like this. I would have drawn a straight line representing someone being stuck or playing at the level of play, hard stuck, whatever you want to call it. Let's just say for the sake of this example, this is a platinum one player over here. Now let's just say this platinum one player really wants to get to diamond four over here now at some point this platinum one player is going to realize all right what got me to platinum one is not going to get me to diamond four so i need to do something different so at this point they either start watching youtube educational content they get their friends to help vod, re vod review something they get a coach they eventually set new learning objectives now i thought their improvement would look something like this whether it was like an up and down little mountain thing here all the way getting to diamond four i thought it might even look like a parabola here I might even have thought it would look like a straight line in some rare situations. But what I realized across 2020 and within my coaching clients and just what I've seen in general, none of this really is true. Yes, in some rare cases, this can happen. But majority of people that are stuck at a rank and they really want to get or close these skill gaps, this just wasn't the case. And the people that actually did successfully get unstuck, they didn't do it this way. This is what actually happened. They actually temporarily dropped in rank. Sometimes, if it were the Platinum 1 player, they would drop to Platinum 2 or even to Platinum 3. Then they would slowly make their way up to Diamond 4, sometimes even above Diamond 3, Diamond 2. They would actually skip Diamond 4 completely. And it always got me wondering, Curtis, what the hell is going on here? This is why this video took me so long to make, because I genuinely just didn't have the answers. Now, this is just a theory, but I believe it makes a lot of sense. This period here is what I call the danger zone. We're gonna talk a lot about the danger zone in a second, but you may ask Curtis, why does someone have to decrease in rank or actually play worse in order to get better? All right, so let's break this down. Now, a few of you who watch my channel, you've probably heard me talk about mental stacks or you've probably heard Dopa talk about attention theory. Let's just say for the sake of this example, this Platinum 1 player at any one time is thinking about four differing things. And to make the example really neat, let's just say that each of these four things is taking up 25% of his mental capacity, right? So at ma he's actually at max capacity when he's thinking about each of these four things, and this allows him to play at a Platinum 1 level. Now, after he gets coaching, or maybe he reviews his VODs, or his friends helps him set a learning objective, let's just say for the sake of this example, this Platinum 1 player really wants to improve his side lane awareness, right? He's probably thinking, okay, my roaming is actually pretty bad, I have no idea what's going in the side lane, my laning's really good, my jungle tracking's really good, my warding's really good, but I just really don't know how to roam. So in order to do that, I need to pan my camera more to the side lane. So he sets his learning objective, I'm gonna pan my camera more, really understand what's going on in the side lanes. Now, if he were to introduce something else to think about here, he can't, he's at max capacity, right? He's thinking, he's laning, he's thinking about his warding here, he's thinking about his jungle tracking, he's probably thinking about wave management, all these things, but this is taking all of his brain power. So in order for him to actually think or introduce this new learning objective and really start panning his camera, thinking about side lane awareness, things like that, he has two options. He can actually shave off a little bit of certain areas or all of the areas and you know make 10% here, or he can actually completely remove one of them and actually add this one in temporarily until it's muscle memory, right? But what happens if you remove this one temporarily or decrease your effectiveness at any of them, you're actually all of a sudden not playing at a Platinum 1 level anymore. You're actually going to be playing maybe at a Platinum 2 or a Platinum 3 level because you're just not playing what got you what got you to Platinum 1 in the first place. You're not doing it anymore. You're actually doing everything worse and you're actually not even good enough at side lane awareness yet because it's still not a habit. You're doing that bad as well. You're doing everything worse. 
right? So you're actually going to drop in rank to Platinum 2 or Platinum 3. This is completely normal. You're going to have a short time period before this is muscle memory. And once this is muscle memory or it's a part of your level of play, or maybe you even get more effective at doing these things, it's just going to be completely fine. You're going to go back up to Platinum 1 or go up above and beyond because you have a new skill. You have a new element to your gameplay. All right. Now, another way to really, really understand this example is think about when you first learned to drive a car. If you were to think about like the lines in a road, right? You got these lines in a road here, and let's just say you're driving along. If you, if you were driving for like an hour, you know pretty straightforward. Like I know how to keep my car in the middle of the lane here. It's pretty straightforward. But let's just say for that first hour, you weren't looking at any of the mirrors, and then the, the guy next to you, your dad or your mom, says, "All right, little Jimmy, now I want you to start looking at the rear view mirror." Every single time, you, for the first time, you actually start looking at the rear view mirror, you're going to find it really hard to stay in the lines. You're like, oh my God, it's really hard. I can't control my car anymore. I'm, I'm, you, you find yourself drifting to one side or you're like going to the other lane, that sort of thing. You're actually worse at both things. You're actually bad at looking at your rear view mirror and you're actually bad at the thing that you were previously pretty good at. You can't do either of them anymore, but you know because you know driving a car has a pretty short uh, feedback cycle, so you can learn that skill pretty easily. Once you get comfortable, you're going to be able to do both really relatively easily. But this is exactly what happens with setting learning objectives. Now, what we're going to do now in the next slide, we're going to talk about the danger of this this little period here, where you actually temporarily get worse. That player going from platinum one to platinum two, platinum three, because this is where everyone goes wrong. This is where all the problems actually start for people because they just don't understand that temporarily you are going to get worse. So let's dive in a little bit deeper about what this danger zone means and what we really need to understand about it. Now, the whole point of this video, guys, is to explain to you why people get hard stuff. Now, if we're going to go back to this diagram here, we have the plateau, then we have the danger zone here, and then we have the climb to the new rank to D4 in this example. Now, the people, the people that get incredibly hard stuck and they're stuck at a rank for, say, a year, two years, three years, whenever they approach this danger zone, they, they reach their level of play and they know they have to do something different, they fall off the face of the planet every single time they enter this danger zone. And we're going to go through what some of the reasons are and why people just simply cannot navigate the danger zone. And I call it the, the, the danger zone because this is where people dig themselves very, very deep holes and create some insane mental blocks. The craziest shit happens in, in the danger zone. Now, number one, the first one, the most common one is that people lose confidence and fall off the face of the earth, usually as a result of unrealistic expectations. They think that, you know, randomly they're going to go from platinum one, they're going to focus on a few things very short term and just randomly climb to D4. They don't think, they don't understand how the danger, the, the danger zone works. And this is all a cultural thing I'll talk about later. Like for some reason in League of Legends, like you're not allowed to play bad. You have to like magically be good overnight. There's no such thing as like, people just think that you just be good. Like you're... You're bad, and then overnight you randomly get good. This is just absolute nonsense. Like, you're not allowed to make mistakes for some reason. You're not allowed to die. You're not allowed to die to ganks. You're not allowed to temporarily lose a few games. It's, like, illegal, apparently. Like, if you have a poor win rate on one champion, like, holy shit, you're just really bad at the game. Like, we just have these insanely unrealistic expectations, and I think that this just gives people such toxic narratives, and it it really allow or forces people to just lose an insane amount of confidence. So what I would recommend for these people, and if you feel like you're losing confidence, you're in the danger zone, you don't know how to navigate it, don't spam games, have other improvement metrics. So let's just say you're improving at, you know, your jungle tracking. Break it down, okay? Can I jungle track for the first five minutes of the game? Okay, if you die to a gang at seven minutes, that's fine. Or maybe it's side lane awareness. You're not going to be able to know exactly what's happening in both side lanes for the entire game. Maybe I want to know exactly what's happening in top lane for the first five minutes. You know, even if you lose that game, if you achieve that little goal, that's great. That's a thumbs up. You're going to make small amounts of progress. And this is the other little point here, guys. Reward small victories. You're not going to go from, you know, having zero jungle tracking skills to being faker in like one or two VOD reviews. It's going to take a while. You have to re reward incremental improvement along the way. Build yourself up rather than you know, shooting yourself in the foot. Very important to understand. The next one, and a very common one, guys, is that people swap around learning objectives after a few losses or a few wins, or they just set way too many learning objectives. You should only be setting two or three max learning objectives, or people, what they do is like, oh, you know, you know, I've had this learning objective for like two or three days. You know, I've won my last like three or four games. I think I'm going to move on to something different. They just move on all the time. And what happens if you go here and you plateau and you move on all the time, you have all these crazy learning objectives, 
you are going to dig yourself a massive hole because none of it is going to be muscle memory. There's just no way you're going to be able to make something muscle memory in like three days. Sometimes it's going to take a month. Sometimes it's going to take two months. That's just the reality of league. There's no cheat code. There's no like instant tip. You're going to get to diamond in like a week. Like league is an absolute grind. And if anyone tells you otherwise, it's just not true. Because it did, that just wasn't the case for me. It wasn't the case for any high low player that I know. Unless they're incredibly talented. And that's just, that's just not fair on everyone else. Um, and the other note here, guys, is that lucky win streaks do exist. Right? You might get a day right where you win six, seven games in a row. We all know that lucky win streaks exist. And we all know that unlucky loss streaks exist. Just because you won six or seven games in a row, you may just not have gotten punished for your, your area of improvement. You may have... Have still have poor jungle tracking, but you got really lucky that like you just had the winning jungler every single game, or your side lanes were winning, so you're, they were dragging all the jungle attention. Like you could just get lucky. Just because you have seven wins in a row doesn't magically mean you can shift your learning objectives. All right, very also important to understand. Number three, another very common one: people blame champion pool for their losses. In turn, changing their champion pool causing a whole other host of problems. All right, if we go make a little bit of space here. You plateau, and generally you only get to this rank because you have a certain amount of champion mastery, and you're like, you know what, I'm losing a lot now, it has to be my champion, that's the easiest thing to blame, it can't be my level of play as a player or anything that I'm doing in game, it has to be my champion, right? So if it's your champion, you swap champions, then, you're, then your attention is not focusing on like, learning the game, it's actually focusing on learning a champion, then you get worse, you lose even more, then it ties back into the losing confidence, and then you just have a whole swirling tornado of negativity and um, absolute chaos. So please don't do that. The other one, again here guys, is lose too many games, make a new account, then learn nothing. Again, this single point here is just the bane of my existence. I just, this actually, this actually just genuinely just pisses me the off. I'll be honest with you, this really, really annoys me, okay? I actually love, whenever I see an account on OPG that has a high win rate, let's say like a 68, 70% win rate with like 100 or 150 games played, I love versing those players. You know why? They are the most fragile egos. They tilt off the face of the earth. They have unrealistic expectations of their level of play. They're usually actually not that good because they, they just remake an account, smurf, go all the way back up, and they're actually really stuck at a specific rank. These players are the easiest to beat. If you get them behind, they're never coming back into the game because they're either flaming their teammates out of the game, they're incredibly toxic, or they're just, yeah, just super, super fragile. Please don't waste time. If you go into this little, you know, you go into the danger zone here and you start losing, this is completely normal. I don't give a shit about your MMR. I don't give a shit about your win rate. I don't care if your 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 account looks like dog shit. I don't care if your friends are saying, oh, look, your you know, your 51% win rate on Azir. It's like, who cares, dude? I know if I'm, you know, I've done this before many a times where I'm learning a champion or I'm, I'm getting better at the game. I get worse temporarily. I have incredibly shocking win rates. But then look at me now. I'm like, you know, I have 700, 800 games in Challenger because I just grind. I had 1,000 games in Challenger. I just grinded in those high elo games, which allowed me to actually learn things about the game. Because I'm not going to learn shit if I go and make a gold account or a diamond or like a platinum one account or a diamond four. I'm not learning anything there. Unless I'm learning a new champion, that's completely fine. But if I'm trying to learn the game... Making a smurf is not going to do a single thing. People worry way too much about MMR, which is a complete waste of time as well. And the last little point here, remember guys, some games, like I said before, you may not get punished for your error. Just because your learning objective is jungle tracking and you get really lucky a few games, you don't get ganked, stick with it. You may just not have been punished. Uh, and, and the example here is not being punished for poor teamfight positioning. So let's just say your learning objective is like teamfight positioning, right? You want to have really good teamfight positioning. And let's just say you're playing Orianna and you know, you just, you, you actually came in from like the flank or came in from the side and just got really lucky. Like your teammates just like won the fight anyway. You didn't even really need to be there. Like that's an example. Like you can look at that. You won the team fight, but the way you won the team fight was actually very sloppy. That's where you really need to get into the review. Now, one of the concepts I'm going to talk a lot about throughout 2021 and one of the key themes of my channel is learning to fail. And like I mentioned before, guys, for some reason in the league community, we are expected to just be magically good at the game. For some reason, if you're bad, you just have to find a way to instantly be good. Or if you're really good, you're just naturally talented. There's, 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 for some reason, there's no learning process. Like if you misplay, you're inting. If you get caught, you're piss slow. If you die to a gank, you're hard stuck. There's just no room for mistakes, which is just unbelievable. The only way to improve is to fail. You have to learn how to fail. 
the better you are at failing, the better you are at losing and learning and going through the learning cycle, the better you're going to be than anyone else. I guarantee it. This is just complete nonsense. And I truly believe the best players in the future will be the ones that know how to fail the best. Because failing in itself is a skill. The art of foregoing the short term for long term results. For some reason, we just... You know, we just can't forego the sh we can't forego the short term. We we put a massive emphasis on what happens in this one game and forget this is one game in the grand scheme of five hundred games. For some reason, this one game losing this one game means so much that like I'm just you know I'm just piss low. I'm hard stuck. None of it really matters. I have to just play the same champion and do the exact same thing every single game. It's just this just it just makes no sense to me. All right. So these are some questions I ask you. Can you lose a game and pinpoint where you went wrong and get into the review asking yourself high quality questions? Can you lose a game and not let it affect your performance in the next game? Can you lose three games in a row and still take responsibility for your losses? If you can't do these sorts of things, then obviously you just don't really know how to fail. So you need to learn how to fail. And I believe you know, I'm not that good at like comparatively to some players, right? I'm not the most amazing player. And I got I somehow managed to get top 10 on my server, right? There's players way better than me that are actually lower than me just because I just know how to improve. I know how to fail. I'm okay with failing. I, I don't I know that the, I, it's toxic to have these unrealistic expectations about my level of play. It's just bound to happen. I'm going to die at some point in time, right? And I'm not just saying this because it sounds cool or because I want to sound inspirational. I'm saying this because I hate how much time people waste with the game by making new accounts, just being stuck at the same rank at the same level of play for years, and it makes them so incredibly miserable and fragile. Like, I genuinely do care a lot of, about you guys who are just like stuck in this toxic cycle because I know how it feels. It's just a negative experience. I don't want you guys to have such a negative experience playing the game. Like it's really not healthy, right? And the other thing why it pisses me off is that none of my content will work if you don't understand this. If you don't understand the danger zone, you don't understand foregoing the short term for the long term, you don't understand playing worse in the short term to play better in the future, you don't understand how to fail none of my content's going to work. It may work in the short term, maybe a few tips get you up a rank or whatever, but if you don't truly internalize this stuff, my content really doesn't mean that much. Now I want to talk a little bit about learning objectives because I get asked this a lot. So if you don't have access to a coach, maybe you don't have the money or I'm booked out or other coaches, you can't find them for some reason, or maybe you don't find my YouTube videos overly helpful, maybe they don't connect with your problems, then here are actually a few tips for you guys. Number one, no, the problem is very unlikely your champion, so if you have no idea where to start, look at your deaths and try and find trends over your reviews. How are you dying specifically? Are you dying a lot just to jungle ganks? Are you dying in solo kills? Are you dying when roaming? Are you dying in team fights? How are you actually dying? And just really start to get into the review. If you are in low platinum and gold, Please don't set crazy learning objectives. Like, I don't want you thinking about, like, you know, your mid-game macro farming jungle camps. I don't want you to think about, like, your crazy team fight positioning. I don't want you to think about, like, tempo assessment or, junk, like, insane jungle tracking or, like, insane diving silence. Think about the absolute fundamentals of the game. I have a video on this, how to VOD review at each rank. Please keep it incredibly simple. Number three, listen to your gut and instincts to see what does and doesn't feel comfortable. If something doesn't really feel comfortable in the game, whether it's like the laning phase, you feel really nervous, or like in team fights, you feel really nervous, or whatever it is, that's probably a sign that that's an area you need to improve on because it just doesn't feel comfortable. You probably need to put a little bit of time there. Also, I said this a lot throughout my videos, use a reverse engineering technique. Go back to my other videos if you really want to learn more about it. Um, number four, don't worry if the learning objectives you set are not perfect. In my opinion, any improvement is great. Like, yes, this may not be the most efficient thing to focus on at your given rank, but it's still going to have a pretty big effect on your level of play, and eventually it will come in handy. Number five, keep your learning objectives very actionable and very simple. For example, you know, I want to jungle track for the first seven minutes of the game, right? Or I want to use each ward with intention for the first 15 minutes of the game. Or I want to think about the win condition each and every lull state. Keep it very short, sharp, concise, break it down into specific things. You're not going to go from zero to, zero to 100, so keep that in mind. So hopefully, guys, it puts you on the right direction for Season 11. Hopefully, we can all reach our rank goals, and I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers.